Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Kathy Sweeney. I'm the Associate Pastor of Discipleship here at Christ United Methodist Church. And I want to welcome you along with Chad that he already did this morning. And for anyone who's watching on live stream, a special thank you for joining in today. <clears throat> Chad was nice enough to ask me to participate this morning in, in a sermon on the Lord's Prayer. And he gave me this great, uh, great week on need, on need. And I want to start with a story that may seem a little counterintuitive, but let me tell you this story. My sister-in-law was turning 30, and we were meeting her in Fort Worth with her family, my husband Steve and our son Jack, who was maybe, I think, about a year at the time, not quite talking yet. You remember that? That age? Have you been around kids that age? They talk uh, in different ways, and one of the ways that we had learned to communicate with Jack when he was younger was with sign language, that babies learn a lot more during, uh, with sign language, and they can communicate things like pain or whether they're hungry or whether they're thirsty to you in, in very obvious ways. And one of the things that Jack really liked to do was to tell us that he wanted more food. He would say, more food, more, more. More food, more water, more. He wanted more. And so we're sitting at this table of about, uh, say, 25 people at the Blue Mesa in Fort Worth over on University Street. And Steve is sitting by Jack in the, in the high chair, and he's asking Jack if he wants more. And Jack is telling him, yes, I want more. When all of a sudden, from the other side of the restaurant comes a woman who starts to talk to Steve with a number of gestures and Afri uh, American Sign Language points. Steve turned pale, said, no, 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 no. I don't know any more. <laughs> no more. <laughs> no more. We have two mores there, more food and no more. This question of more, more what? That's what we're going to talk about today. And it's a little strange to talk about that when we're talking about the Lord's Prayer, especially when we're talking about give us this day our daily bread. So let's back up a little bit and talk exactly about what Jesus was talking about in that line, give us this day our daily bread. If you remember in the, in the book of Exodus, Moses has brought uh, or led the people out of Egypt. They've been in the desert for two and a half months. They're grumbling. They're upset. I would imagine they had low blood sugar. They wanted everything now. They were complaining to Moses. Why didn't you just leave us there to die? At least there we had pots of food and water. We were slaves, but we had food. And the Lord says to Moses when he's off on the side, I'm going to rain down bread for these people. Tell your people to gather enough for one day. And on the sixth day, have them gather enough for two days so that they can rest on the seventh. So Moses and his brother Aaron go and tell the Israelites, I know you think that I was the one that brought you out of Egypt, but it was God. And I don't want you to forget that. And God doesn't want you to forget that. So here's how you're going to know it was the Lord. He's heard your complaining, but he's going to give you what you need anyway. And as he shares, and as we hear these words from Exodus chapter 16, the story continues. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. And that evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? 
for they did not know what it was. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The word that is used in this story is manna. You may have heard the phrase manna from heaven. And there's three things that really come together very powerfully when we talk about manna. We talk about manna being a portion of food. In some translations, they use this word omer, which is a a measure of food, but manna being a portion of food. But manna can mean something else too. You can imagine when you have been in Egypt for centuries and your home is in Canaan and you start to interact more with them, the dialects and the language start to merge. You might have have, uh, felt that way. I get that way when I go home to my parents in Arkansas. I start with their little dialect. So when they merge these words, the Egyptian word that has the root for manna is what? You heard me say, you heard me read that they didn't know what it was. They'd been in Egypt for centuries and these dialects and words came together when man for manna means what? What is it? And a final thought about this, the root of that man means status or importance. They may not have known what it was, but they knew it was very special. This is just incredibly powerful. And especially when we link it back to the words of the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. When we put that in the phrase and connect it with manna from heaven, when God provided everything that the Israelites needed, look at what it says. Our daily bread is anything we need. What is it? What is it you need? Today it might be food. Or it might be comfort when you're mourning. It might be controlling your anger. Whatever you need, what is it? And what we need at any moment, special and important, because God is providing it. What is it? God knows and God provides. But is there more to this? The Israelites were instructed later in the story to take only what they needed for the day, only that amount of manna that they would need for the, from the morning for the whole day. And those who tried to outsmart God, they had a little problem because their manna, what they wanted a little more of, that food would rot before morning. And in that circumstance, more is definitely a bad thing. It goes against what God commanded, and it rotted. It was too much. But I find myself asking this question, is more always bad? Or is there a context of more when we talk about need? R.C. Sproul has uh, been credited with a story about an orphanage and the children after the Korean War. As you can imagine, in that time, Vietnam, Korea, Bosnia, later on, even today, Syria, with with the effects of war going on, there are a significant hundreds and thousands of children who become immediate orphans. And some of the relief people who went in in Korea the relief agencies came in to deal with all the problems that arose in connection with these newfound orphan children. And one of the people who was invited in to the relief effort noticed something and told about a problem that they encountered in this unique circumstance. The relief efforts brought in everything those children needed, clothes, three square meals a day, and they were comforted, and they were, they were fine. They had everything they needed. But at night, they were anxious, and they lacked confidence, and they couldn't sleep. And finally, after asking the question, they realized that they weren't worried about that day. They were worried 
and anxious that the meal would be provided tomorrow. The relief efforts came up with a fascinating way to solve their problem. At the end of every day when they said their prayers, they would tear a piece of bread off of the loaf and place it in their hand. And they'd go to sleep with that. The children knew that the purpose of that bread was not to eat it. They had already had everything they needed that day. This was something more. And it worked. The children started sleeping more. They slept better. They were less anxious. This was their security blanket that reminded them that they will always have provision for their daily needs as long as those relief efforts are there. The bread calmed them. And likewise, we take comfort in knowing that our physical needs are met, that we have needs that are provided by God. Those children had literal daily bread, and it was a a security blanket for them. It was their comfort. What they received during the day, those three meals, was all they needed physically, but they needed more spiritually. They needed more. And so the relief workers provided that more. And that's just what God does for us. Is our bread literally food? Maybe. It could be. More so, though, I want you to think of this bread, this manna. What is it? I think our bread is God's mercy and grace and love. It's the confidence in the abundance of that grace that brings us peace, that gives us our security blanket that we know every night we can sleep comfortably. And by believing in God's promise and being an Easter people, we can boldly ask for what we need from God and know that God will shower more and more of it upon us than we truly deserve. This, friends, this is what I mean by having more in a time of need. We live in a world that has deep, deep dividing gaps between those living in abundance and those living with scarcity. There's examples all around us in Plano, in Dallas, in Texas, in the United States, in Africa, in Asia, income gaps, family support gaps, gaps in justice, gaps in education. So many of our neighbors are living day to day, living in a world of desperate need. So many needs that it's really hard to pare it down to just that one thing to call their daily bread. So what then would be more for them? Don't get me wrong. Every single one of us has that same glorious abundance of God's love and grace and mercy. All of us. It's all around us, and God does not distinguish. But this wonderful spiritual journey that we take with God, it's not something we take alone. We bring others with us. We share that love with others And we go side by side. What it means then is that we are called to be the more. When someone's sick, we are the more that cares for them. When someone's grieving, we're the more to wipe their tears. When someone's hungry or thirsty, we are the more that brings them food and drink. And we accept that responsibility to be more. Then we slowly and surely start to fill the gap of the needs in this world. And we act just as Christ commanded, to love each other, to love our neighbor, to shower them with more. We can ask with confidence that God provide our daily bread. And we know we will be showered with love and grace and mercy far beyond what we deserve. And just as we accept those gifts, we can confidently turn to our neighbors and shower it back on them. And with our hearts grounded in the abundance of peace that this gives us, the security blanket, a peace that outlasts any bread, a peace that never goes bad, that never rots, with that peace, we can confidently share the abundance of God's love with others.
we ask for our daily bread from God. And we know from experience that God provides. God did that for the Israelites, and he's still doing it today. We're connecting this this story of need, give us this day our daily bread, with this concept of more grace, more mercy. I want to I close with a, a final story, a final, a final observation that I made this, this past week. It's getting warm enough that you can open and just have your screen door open. And outside in our backyard, we have what I think is just a beautiful Japanese maple tree. And over the last week, I've noticed that a blue jay and the family has um, built their nest, and the mother blue jay is sitting on the eggs. I can see it from our window, from the bedroom window. And it's fascinating to watch. I imagine the day that those eggs will crack and the baby birds will come out. And the mother will fly away as the baby birds are looking up and opening their beak and asking more, more, more. I need and the mother bird will come back and give those babies everything they need. Isn't that what we pray for? Isn't that what God promises? More of what we need. Give us this day our daily bread. What is it? Whatever it is, God knows knows exactly what you need. More love, more grace. Lord, I pray that you provide what we need, knowing that you will bring abundantly more than we deserve. And I ask it all with the words of Jesus. Will you join me as we pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen.